everybody. I'm Nicola Pogson and I am Director of Alumni Relations at Imperial College. It's a very great pleasure to welcome you here today to uh, our Dean's Lounge event. And we're really delighted to be hosting a community of alumni, friends and students from both Imperial College and Babson College. So a big welcome to all of you. Do keep posting where you're coming in from, just whilst I uh, run through just a couple of housekeeping points. So for the next hour, we'll be listening to a chat between Dean Francisco Veloso, who's Dean of Imperial College Business School and Imperial alumnus, President Stephen Spinelli of Babson College. So first of all, I just want to remind you that the event is being recorded and the recording will be available at a later stage. So uh, just remind, remember that if you're putting in anything personal that you don't wanna share with people uh, on an ongoing basis in the Q&A. And secondly, there will be time for Q&A. So at any point, just put in your, your questions that you might have in the Q&A and uh, we'll be looking at that probably towards the end of the session, but just feel free to, to pose them in there and we'll answer those as, we, as the event goes on. So I'm now going to hand over to Dean Francisco Veloso and I hope everybody has a great event. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nicola. Uh, and uh, del delighted to, to have you all, all here uh, tonight uh, to, to share this, uh, this chat with, uh, with Steven Spinelli that I will, um, I will formally introduce in just, uh, in just a, a, a tiny bit. Uh, first, just uh, let me start by saying, you know, how delighted I am always to connect with our with our uh, alumni uh, community, um, and um, and you know, and we're doing this digital, but we actually already started to do some of these physically as well, which which is very nice. And so my we've had um, one in South Kensington, and I actually did one in in Dubai with an alumni, and it's always a wonderful opportunity to to connect to 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 the community, to le to to hear about you know how they're doing. Um, you know the challenge that we've all been going through over the last um, over the last uh, few months, and uh, now you know a few months is kind of more like a year and a half uh, for for all of us. Um, but also about the you know what's happening around us, but the, and the challenges and opportunities that appear in uh, all all throughout. And um, you know this this these events are also an opportunity to tell you uh, you know and to share with our with our community where where we are in terms of the school. And so before introducing uh, Stephen and getting on, on our chat just uh, you know to 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 our uh, alumni to say you know that we've been like everybody else navigating through through covid over the last uh, uh, the last year and a half but i believe that the, the school has been doing quite well um, you know given the challenges that uh, that we've been thrown off at um, you know together with with everybody else of course and and one thing that that really makes me me proud is the fact that We've been able to navigate through through the challenges of the of, of the past year and a half, very much through to our mission. You know, see this notion of being, uh, you know, at the leading edge, to being an innovative uh, hub, is something that we took to heart um, in uh, when COVID uh, when COVID uh, affected us, um, and we worked with our community, with with our students. Now many of our alums, and I was discussing that with with a, a few. Uh, last week when I was meeting them in, in South Kensington, how much how we work together in an innovative way to really, um, you know, uh, be able to continue to deliver our education, continue to do our research in a very significant way. And, uh, you know, and when I mention about being true to our mission, I mean about, for example, the fact that we very quickly decided to adopt a, a hybrid multimodal delivery uh, environment. Um, and And not only you know, adapted that from the point of view of the technological characteristics that you need in a, in a room to, to, to implement that, but also, for example, to create something like the figure of a co-pilot, which is the eyes and the ears of the remote, um, of the remote class in the classroom uh, and a, a variety of other uh, kind of delivery innovation modes to be able to, uh, to continue to offer a, a, an outstanding experience to our students, of course, within, within the limitations that we all, that we all had. The other part that um, I wanted to just share with you is, is the fact that, you know, throughout this time, and especially as we've started to navigate, uh, you know, uh, out of the, 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 the biggest challenges of the pandemic, you know, we've continued to push um, new initiatives, new programs, 
uh, new uh, new research and, and certainly starting with, with 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 the programs. I mean, we've uh, redesigned very significantly our MBA to make it more connected to some of our strategic themes to make sure that entrepreneurship, to make sure that digital transformation, to make sure that analytics, uh, but also finance were very much, uh, you know, at the heart of what we do with, with our MBA. And this is one uh, of the efforts that we've been working on uh, that exemplifies, you know, this idea of continuing to push forward even through the, the pandemic and to think about, about the future. The other area that, that I'm really um, uh, proud of is, is how much we've been, you know, working through uh, our intellectual leadership in, in themes that, that we know are, are very dear to our, uh, to our community and to our, uh, and to our mission. And so we're very much working with the rest of college to help navigate through COVID. Uh, you know, one of the examples in, in, in some of the activities that our business school faculty were involved is, you know, helping to think about how should the NHS respond uh, when they're having to prioritize between COVID patients and patients that are coming from other uh, pathologies. You know, how to think about that is, is one of the examples of how we connected some of our intellectual capabilities to, you know, to, to the challenge that we were all living. But also, for example, in the area of, of climate and sustainability, you know, we've, we've pushed through during the pandemic with a major collaboration with Singapore Management University and the Monetary Authority of Singapore to really try to understand how to bring finance to the heart of climate change and to net zero, which is something that, of course, as we're going through COP26, uh, we know it's so fundamental for our future. Uh, and in that, in, that, in that same aspect, we also launched this, uh, this initiative in, in, in the area of, uh, of sustainability, the Leonardo Center on the Future uh, on business for, for society. And, you know, the last example that I just wanted to, to share with all of you about kind of the things that we've been working on is precisely in the area of entrepreneurship. I mean, it's a very important area for the business school and for what we're doing. And one of the things that we've been working on is the, the establishment of a deep tech entrepreneurship institute together with the rest of college to really make sure that we can bring to light these amazing technologies um, that, uh, that are coming out of the labs at Imperial and really help these technologies navigate through that very complicated um, value of death that they, that they have to go through before they're uh, prepared to receive venture capital and to move to the next, uh, to the next uh, uh, stages. And so this is just a, a few of the, of the very quick highlights to show you know, how much the school is active, engaged, pushing forward. Um, and one of the things that of course, uh, we like to do, and it's quite important for us to connect to our alumni community. And that's really what, why I'm so delighted to be here today with, with Steven Spinelli, because among many other things, he's one of our uh, distinguished, distinctive um, alumni. And I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of his uh, achievements, his, uh, his journey, and, um, and all the things that he's doing, uh, but also you know, his vision for the future and what he's pushing forward at, uh, at, at Babson College, and we will learn about, uh, about this. And so you know, we already, uh, Nico already shared with, with all of us that he's the 14th president of, of, of Babson uh, College. Uh, you know, and as a lifelong entrepreneur, he's, you know, he's had his uh, career at the intersection of academia, business, but also philanthropy. You know, he, he will share with us how he co-founded Jiffy Lube, was the CEO of American uh, Oil Change, and, uh, you know, really took those, 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 those um, uh, corporates to a, a, an amazing level of, uh, of uh, development and impact, uh, you know, in the U.S. and internationally. And he's also been uh, a, a really uh, amazing educator and researcher, spent many years uh, at Babson on the faculty before going in his own entrepreneurial career and, uh, and, then, uh, and then came back more recently as, uh, as, as the president. And so uh, one thing that of course makes us particularly proud of, of, of Steven Spinelli is the fact that he got a PhD in economics um, uh, from Imperial College uh, Business School and um, uh, you know, uh, in addition to his own MBA from, from Babson College and, and a BA in economics from uh, McDaniel uh, uh, College. And so Stephen, I'm absolutely delighted to have you here. Thank you so much for, um, for accepting our invitation to share uh, you know, some, uh, uh, some of your uh, journey and some of your uh, learnings with, uh, with us. 
and uh, and that um, that that's perhaps where where we where we can start. You know, I gave two or three highlights, but but it's very different to kind of hear it from you. And 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 what I'd like to start is, you know, perhaps give us a little bit of a of your own, you know, high and low points, perhaps of 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 your career, because you cannot be a successful entrepreneur and and a leading educator without without both. And and we can learn, as we know, through. Through, through through the challenge that we have to go through, and so perhaps we we, we can start that, and um, you know I'll uh, hand it out the floor to 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 you. Thank you, Francisco. It's a it's a real really a pleasure and honor to be a part of the Imperial College community. I would say it was the most rigorous intellectual experience of my life in academia or outside of academia. The the intensity and the focus of Imperial College, the setting, the the people I studied with, the professors I studied with were uh, really world-class and, and they remain dear friends. Uh, you know, special hello to uh, Vivan Wadwa, who is on uh, the, I think on the, uh, on the Zoom today, who is a Babson graduate and now attending Imperial College. Um, and to, uh, I think, Steen Sorensen, who is a, a, an office mate of mine at Imperial, we both did our PhDs together, he was a brilliant academic, and I taught him how to play squash, or at least that's how I how I remember the relationship. Um, you know, the the for, for me the intersection of education and entrepreneurship is intimate, and and frankly made more intimate by my Imperial College experience. When uh, when we started Jiffy Lube, um, it, you know, it was changing oil in cars fast. It's not a terribly complex idea. So everybody, you could communicate that idea to a, to a broad audience. And, and the broad audience we wanted to communicate to were people who owned cars. So it seemed like a fairly simple uh, a communication protocol. And uh, we did terrible. Uh, and it was, it was really hard to break through existing channels of, of distribution and methodologies and, and buying behaviors. And, and I said, to myself, either I wasn't smart enough to be a successful entre entrepreneur or I wasn't well-educated enough. That's when I went back and did my MBA at night at Babson College and said, I'm gonna really apply some intellectual rigor to the entrepreneurial process. And we, we went from there to, uh, you know, from a startup to about 2000 stores uh, when, when we sold the company. And that's when, I, I went to Imperial College after that and said, this whole idea of thought and action being intimate partners in the entrepreneurial process is intriguing to me because historically we've thought of entrepreneurs as being born and they've got some special fairy dust and uh, they can do something. Uh, they're, they're intuitive about uh, what they're doing and they see things other people don't see. And, and maybe there is some basic skill set but I think the rigor of Imperial College in particular taught me that intellectual acuity, really being deeply uh, investigative, disciplined in thought, made me more creative, allowed me the degrees of freedom to explore and to explore within boundaries that I could communicate to audiences. So you could do startups, you could do investments, you could make decisions, in an almost, it, it almost frees one to do that. So after we built, uh, after I sold Jiffy Loop, got the PhD, went back and taught, I taught a lot of students to think of themselves as having a whole brain, not just a half a brain, not a left side and a right side, but an entire side of a brain. Very good. And, you know, and in terms of your career, you were mentioning, you know, that you were in, in Jiffy Lube and then you came, um, you know, you came to Imperial and then what, what, what followed, what followed from there? Well, you know, the, the whole um, thought and action paradigm, um, uh, I, I get in trouble with it because I, I like to say, I get in trouble with my academic friends because I say thought without action is frivolous, action without thought is dangerous. So if you believe, you, if you don't want to be frivolous or dangerous, you have to put the two together. So I went back and after I got the PhD, I got a job teaching at Babson College and I taught entrepreneurship, um, invested a lot in students and frankly, um, made a lot of money you know, investing in students. I'm sure there's plenty of students here who are happy to hear that uh, professors are willing to do some investing. 
Uh, I was in, I'm an incredibly difficult investor to have, and um, I'm I'm demanding, uh, and I expect a return uh, when I do that. Uh, and then I went off and um, became president of a little college in Philadelphia called Philadelphia University. It was rooted in the textile industry, it was the first textile college in the world, and then grew beyond that to lots of professions. And then I merged Philadelphia University with Thomas Jefferson University, which is a large medical school, um, and, and did that for 11 years, and then retired and came back to Babson to be uh, president here. In the middle of all of that, um, I, I invested in, and this is a really an Imperial College link, strangely. Um, I got called by a company, a small company in New Hampshire, in the USA, it was a fitness company, and they're having some issues with their franchisees. Small company, maybe 200 units, small by U.S. Uh, size, about 200 stores, 200 gyms. And uh, they called me, and I looked at the work I had done at Imperial and said, oh, this fits perfectly. I think I can solve this problem. Uh, we solved the problem. They gave me a board seat uh, for doing that and asked me if I would like to invest. I'm a, I'm a difficult investor, but yes, I did invest. Um, and since have become chairman of the board of that company, and now we're the largest fitness company in the world with about 2,100 gyms across America and South America and Canada. Um, and I came back to Babson to become president again. So the, the thought and action paradigm continues to be the fulcrum on which I balance my life. When, I get, uh, when I'm too academically engaged, I go buy a business. When I'm too engaged in the businesses, I focus on the academia. And if they push me, both of them, push me to a different level, I think of performance. Very good. And, you know, uh, that, that, that is very, very interesting. And, and, and it's, uh, it, it's your, you know, your a wonderful incarnation of, the, of that same idea of thought and action on, on how you've been going back and forth between the, the action oriented and the reflective part and you're connected to the, to the educational front. Uh, I mean, you 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 mentioned uh, already something uh, a little bit about about Imperial and and uh, you know and how much how important it was for for you. I mean, you've been quoted as saying that Imperial literally changed the way you look at the world, right? How so? You know, what what was you know why 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 did you say that, and how would you characterize that, Al? Yeah, you know, I still continue to allow that thinking to germinate. Uh, the the Imperial, the first thing the Imperial did for me was demand that I think deeply. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not sure before Imperial, I, I spent that much time thinking deeply. I was, I was running and trying to get things done. And I don't know that I allowed information and knowledge and synthesis of, of data to, to become manifest. I didn't spend the time in deep thought that Imperial insisted on. And, and part of that, uh, that, that learning and what really changed my thinking about entrepreneurship, certainly, and about uh, education generally, was that the, the time to reflect is action. You are doing an intellectual energy pump that is really building your intellectual capabilities and the intellectual capital that you can offer to yourself, your family, your society. And the action orientation is a learning process also. So as I go take action, that action gives me experiences that allows me to feed my, my understanding. And that intimate, that's where the intimate embrace comes. It isn't one is, is you're sitting back and pondering the future, and the other one is you're racing forward headstrong. You're learning and acting in both of those paradigms. It made my life more three-dimensional and the things that I did more three-dimensional. I think it made me a better teacher, a better investor, a better president, a better entrepreneur. And it was an imperial college rigor and insistence on that coming together that made me uh, see the world differently. That's uh, that's very nice, and, and thank you for uh, for for that uh, uh, you know for that for sharing that that perspective. I mean, you're right that we we continue to take the the rigor quite uh, quite seriously is a, a quite important uh, characteristic of um, of imp the imperial education, and then combining that with with creating an opportunity like in Babson for the for the students to experiment to to try to 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 move forward and to and to try and to try things. 
Um, but you know, still on, on your on your career, you know, as you were mentioning, you you were talking about you know the the value of, and the rigor uh, of education, and then you know what do you you know? And we were talking here for some 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 current students and, and some alumni, you know. When you think about more of your entrepreneurial than career, right? I mean, what what were the the the, the key elements that you then brought forward? What, what you know, you mentioned the, the the rigor that helped you think through that. Is there anything else in terms of the the, the value of education and academia that you think is quite important for for the people that uh, that they think through and and, and drive forward? Yeah, you know, I can get full of myself and start talking in, in very academic terms about some of this stuff. Uh, but, but one of the things that a college does for you, a college or university, and the rigor of the environment is that it, it makes you process and synthesize information in a more holistic way. And that information isn't, again, if you get the thought and action, if you get the classroom and you get the practice, if you get in the... Uh, the, you know, the boardroom and, and in the field, you start to see the world in a more holistic way. And, and it's the Imperial College campus or the Babson College campus or that experience gives you an opportunity to get into that incubator of life in, an, in a reflective and supportive way. The, uh, you know, I, I remember many a time at Imperial where I was very frustrated. I, I was thinking about, well, I've got to push to the next level and and, and when do I get this paper accepted? And when do I get to the PhD? And um, my supervisor, Sue Burley, saying, um, if you don't slow, slow down, you're not going to go anywhere. And, it, you know, sort of that contradiction in terms that she said, you, you know, the, the rigor does not, uh, the environment you're in is allowing you to carve a path that will last you a lifetime. The, the relationships you have, the, the content you learn, the failures that you uh, um, endure. This is a, a, the classically safe environment for you to experience all of that and to grow and to have a support system that will not stop you from getting pain, but will stop you from imploding because of it. And that, well, frankly, um, in Boston for, for Babson or in London for Imperial, um, that nurturing environment is just so rich with culture and diversity and thought that it is an explosion of potential in a contained environment that allows it that energy to grow you. I mean, that, that's a very nice uh, segue to, into the, the, the next question that I wanted to ask, which is, you know, of course, as you said, you know, you had your early career and then you had this, you know, uh, kind of more practical elements that you wanted to put in place, these ideas that you wanted to action on. And, you know, you went, became a successful entrepreneur in a variety of ways. And then you, be, you, you came back as president of, of, uh, of Babson, right? I mean, what, what, what motivated you? You know, you were saying you were investing, you had uh, opportunities, you had, uh, in, you, know, uh, uh, you know, firm projects that, uh, that, uh, that you were developing and connecting to. What, why do you thought it would be, uh, it would be a, 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 a next career move to for you to go back back to to head a a, a university like Babson. Well, you know, uh, Babson is um, is a unique place, and and every school in the world believes they're unique in some way, and, and probably they are. The um, I like to describe Babson College as the business equivalent of a music conservatory. So at Babson, you're an undergraduate major in business, or you're a master's degree in business. We have 3,400 students in a large executive education program, and all of them are playing some business instrument, be it marketing or finance or strategy or entrepreneurship. So there is this very concentrated experiment going on here in education that says we can build the leaders of the future. We, we launched our Arthur M. Blank School for Entrepreneurial Leadership because, and, and one of the reasons I came back to Babson was to launch a program like this that said, historically, entrepreneurship has been seen as, you know, maybe uh, a random behavior that, again, that you, you receive at birth, or maybe it, it then evolved, I think, and I think to some extent because of places like Imperial and, and Babson, it evolved to a competency or, or a competitive advantage that maybe could be taught. 
I think entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial leadership, the actions of the individual to drive value, to create social and economic value, has become a required competency. I think the world is, is moving forward at lightning pace and COVID accelerated that incredible pace. And now the, the, the fragility of our social and economic systems are exposed and the flaws in them. And what we need is people, values-driven entrepreneurial leaders who can see where the flaws are and look for a better pathway, create new business models, change organizations, teach in better and dynamic ways. And if we do that, I think we change the arc of history from higher education being on the precipice to higher education being in renaissance. And for business educators, Francisco, we have, I think, even, we have certainly have an economic uh, uh, responsibility to, to keep society lifted. I think we have a moral responsibility to create value and, and raise the human condition. And I think it can happen in business schools and I think it can happen through entrepreneurship. Very good. And, and, and I, I very much uh, agree with you. And, and in fact, you know, you, you mentioned the role that especially entrepreneurial driven um, institutions such as Imperial or, or Babson can play in terms of helping advance those, uh, those elements. And, and in general, I mean, you started to mention about the acceleration of COVID. You know, what, you know, what, what do you see uh, in general education changing? I mean, I know you're pushing a lot of innovations in, in Babson yourself. You've, you've yeah. alluded to some of those elements. You know, if we think more broadly, you know, what, what do you think is, is, is the, the, the important challenges that are out there for, for us educators, even beyond business school? Let's think about the broader field. Let's, let's yeah. think about the broader environment in the U.S. and in, in the U.K. and, and, and elsewhere. What, what, what's your own views about if we move beyond our own institutions uh, yeah. on the challenges and opportunities? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, it, it is a, a passionate belief. And here's, again, where the, where the Imperial College uh, Ph.D. program uh, disciplined my thinking. And, and I, I looked at the phenomenon of, uh, of networks. And, you know, my work was in franchising or inter-organizational inter forms, networks. Um, and, and the internet created an amazing set of communications that empowered social networks at a level never before, humanity has never before understood. That led to the natural evolution of, I think, economic networks. So now we have social networks and economic networks. Where are the educational networks? Why are these individual institutions playing in these one-off games with ivory towers and, and moats around them? Why, where, what is the future of education? And can there be an, a, an educational network that can really embrace all of society and bring people together, teach better, be more effective, be more efficient, be more timely, be more cost-effective in the way we deliver. The educational network, the emergence of the educational network can transform learning across the globe. I firmly believe that. And I think that, and that's a very important point because especially now with this more kind of blended view of the world, right? The idea that you can you know, drive content you know, connect it and then connect to other institutions to basically leverage that content, but also with a local environment. I, I think it certainly brings that uh, th those um, you know those opportunities and this, as you mentioned, more, more than opportunity and need and the responsibility for us to drive some of that um, of the, those opportunities forward. I think in a very significant way, and and I very much uh, agree with you on, on on that. And you know, just uh, before leading up to to to, to the next question. Just a, a call, you know, you have your Q&A, you know, um, I'm, I have one or two more questions for, for Stephen, but then the idea is an opportunity to, for all of you to also uh, ask, uh, ask questions. And so just uh, go there and, and if you also, if you already have uh, some questions there that you like, you can also click on them and uh, that will help uh, understand which of uh, which are the questions that we may prioritize if we, if we start having a lot of, um, a lot of questions. So just a, uh, a call for you to start thinking about those questions while I ask uh, my, my final kind of introductory uh, questions to, uh, to Stephen. And so we, we've talked a lot about education uh, and about the value of, it, of, of education and, and our responsibility as, 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 as educators. Let, let's turn, turn back a little bit to, to, to the entrepreneurial uh, side and, to, and to, the, to the professionals and, and entrepreneurs that are 
uh, uh, hearing us, right? I mean, w when when you think about not so much now on the educational side, but you think about them, you know, they graduated, you know, from Imperial, um, you know, uh, uh, typically been, you know, driving successful initiatives forward as as, as most um, of our of our alumni uh, uh, do, and, and so you know. What kind of um, advice would you have for them, given the changes that were happening, the opportunities that you're seeing, you know, for them to, um, on, on the way that they should look at the world, that they should look at opportunities, that they should look at their own career? Yeah, thank you. You know, um, as I, you know, sometimes entrepreneurs, and, and oftentimes Steve Spinelli is um, criticized for being, for wearing rose-colored glasses, um, but I can't help myself. I I, as I think that we're looking at a renaissance in education, or at least the chance for a renaissance in education, I think we are going to see an explosion of entrepreneurial behavior. Not only because the variables are changing so rapidly that if I don't react quickly, and if I don't understand the nature of opportunity, I can't manage anymore. It is a core competency that I have to have. But the world that change allows for more gaps in the marketplace for you entrepreneurs to fill. And at a time when the world is awash in capital and that capital is very mobile, there's more time for you, there's more money for you, more investment capital for you to garner earlier in your life than ever before. It is for the first time in my life, and I'm a lot older than you, Francisco, for the first time in my life, it is a competitive advantage in the capital marketplace to be younger. So shame on you if you don't take your ideas to the capital marketplace and raise a lot of money. It is, it is just an incredible phenomenon. So I would, I would ask you to be thinking about entrepreneur, entrepreneurial behavior in the startup uh, environment in a very deep and serious way and one of the problems I see with a lot of students is they think too small. I think you got to think big in a market that is looking for scale in everything it does and is looking for the next round, uh, an excuse to do the next round of investment. I've never been in a market so rich with capital and so, with such a hunger for growth. So I would ask you to be really thinking deeply about that. For those of you who don't want to do startups, you have an equally interesting opportunity. The change within your industry, I, with your Imperial College background, especially the, the, the rigor and depth of it, you're going to see that change before many people will because you're analytical in your perspective and you'll start to see the, the variances. When you see those variances, if you can be a half a step ahead of the competition and you can make the changes internally, if you can create an organizational behavior that, that believes in the rigors of market demand and your ability to lead them to change, then there's unlimited growth for corporate entrepreneurship. So th this is the, the, the re it's renaissance in, in education and golden age of entrepreneurship. Thank you. Um, you know, there's a, a very interesting question uh, that's uh, popping up, and, and that that may be a, a good, uh, a, a, you know, a good place to 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 start engaging with uh, with the Q and A that's coming up. Um, and then, you know, I, I still may have a couple of questions, but but let's start to to engage our, our our community in the in the questions. And this is, you know, the question about kind of like the the broader social impact, right? I mean, you you and the question is, you know. How do you get entrepreneurs to think about to be value driven, but also to focus on having economic as well as uh, social impact? What, what, what's your what's your view and experience on that? Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you two parts to the answer. Um, one is is uh, moral um, that there's a there's an old Jewish saying that we there are no pockets in death shrouds. So uh, you ain't taking it with you. Uh, so if you're not doing some good. Uh, you know, why, why are we here? Uh, there's, a, there's a second, um, almost uh, objective piece to this in my assessment, and frankly, in my research, that says when you can attach a value proposition to a social good, the revenue stream becomes more durable, and the discount rate goes down. So you Imperial College graduates should understand exactly what that means. I get more money over the long term. Therefore, the present discounted value of my company is greater. 
So I, I would encourage you to make an explicit statement of social value so that you underpin that revenue stream, you reduce the discount rate, you get better uh, financing for it, and you make better long-term capital gain. I'm absolutely convinced of that. People uh, aspire to be good people, and they want to associate with good companies. And when they see that, they will invest and they will buy, and you will make more money, and I think that's a great thing. Thank you, Justine. I mean, I very much uh, agree with you, and, and and I think that this this notion on on you know shifting the the perspective to be thinking about creating value, right? And and when you're creating value for the community, for for the clients, you know, and and if you're smart enough, you're going to find a way to appropriate that value, right? And so that 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 very important shift from just capturing value into kind of generating value, and that value being thought out even in a broad perspective, I, I think is really at the heart of that very important uh, transition. And, and uh, like you, you know, when I see the, the entrepreneurs and the very successful entrepreneurs, I mean, they, they were focusing on creating value and, and very often, uh, you know, in a very broad sense. Uh, and, yeah, and then they, you know, they, 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 they probably got, you know, very successful also financially, but that was because they were creating a lot of value and, and, and taking that in consideration. At the same time, uh, you know, it's it's quite important that we, you know, create, um, you know, an environment in our schools for that reflection to take place and for the students, you know, to make uh, the evolution around that shift in mentality and making sure that they are, you know, having, uh, having very, uh, you know, the, the social uh, element very much at the heart of what they of what they uh, reflect on and how they think about uh, uh, about the the future, you know. Uh, there's a, a question here about kind of like universities and and, and spin-offs, right? And uh, you know, your your own views, you know, as you said, you know, both Imperial and Babson are very involved in in supporting startups. You know, we believe in the power of the entrepreneurial uh, uh, ability to change regions, to change the world, um, and but uh, you know. Well, how, how should we relate? I mean, I don't know. Actually, I don't know the, what's the, the policy on that in, in, in Babson. It's an interesting question, which is, you know, how, how should the university relate to the spin-offs in terms of the, of the equity side? You know, should it be there, not be there? Um, you know, have some instruments, have some flexibility. What, uh, what, what's your own view on that? Yeah, I've got, there, there's a very specific view on that and then a broader view on, on what collaboration and partnership means. Um, for for spin-offs... Um, I think that there, there is a, an investment formula that colleges and universities ought to pay attention to, that uh, they're making clear investment in students and they're going into the deal. There should be an understanding of what the intellectual property rights are. So um, if your lab costs us uh, X number of dollars uh, and you raise Y number, then the, the, that would indicate an ownership percentage of the following. And I don't actually care what the formula is, I care that there's an explicit statement of the formula so that we know going into the deal, when I go to Imperial to do research on something, that I'm going to do that with some implied value going to the, the college or university. And, and frankly, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. Um, and, and the value that students will get from an engaged university's network is fabulous, from its professorial network to its alumni network to its community networks. Um, if the college has a bigger vested interest in the, in, a, in the technology being developed and the potential for the business to be launched, then they will work harder at creating that network effect inside and outside of their university. And I think that's a, a rational human phenomenon. In, again, in terms of the university collaborating, you know, the, I, I like to summarize Babson's strategic plan in five words. Entrepreneurial leaders impacting ecosystems everywhere. Entrepreneurial leaders impacting ecosystems everywhere. That says that we have to network. We have to be engaged in an ecosystem to be able to create real value. So I think if students invest in Imperial and Imperial invest in students, same thing at Babson, that the entire entity, the entire collaboration grows. Uh, and and. Figuring out that piece of the ecosystem is hard. And I think there'll be cultural differences and I think, think there'll be some slip ups and that's okay. Let's travel that road. 
Very good, thank you. And th th there's a, an interesting question related to, in, in some ways, to, to, to the points we're making, but, and, and there's also a specific question, but let me ask the, the broader question um, first, which is about the values of Imperial and Babson. You know, you've obviously done the PhD with us, you've, you've been at Babson as a faculty member and now as, as, as president. How do you, um, you know, compare, relate the values of the two of the two institutions? Um, you, you know, what, what's what, what's your your view on that? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. My my um, experience at Imperial College is so attached to the PhD program. You know, that's that's what I was there for, and so attached to my supervisor, Sue Burley, that uh, a lot of it is colored by that relationship. I think she's a genius. I think she is. Uh, one of the most wonderful people in the history of the world. So my uh, sort of <laughs> coloring of Imperial College is through the lens of this near perfect individual. So that that's uh, probably an unrealistic expectation to have of colleges. But what she did was to bring me into different parts of Imperial College. I went to some science meetings. I went to some uh, investment meetings. I, I did I, I met with chemistry professors. She made me a part of the, of the community, of the imperial ecosystem, and asked me to explore that and to see what made me excited intellectually and socially and, and how, that, uh, how I could add to that ecosystem. I think that is brilliant education. She taught me a lot of stuff about statistics and microeconomics and all kinds of stuff, too. Maybe I could have got that somewhere else. I don't know that I could have gotten that immersion in an ecosystem the, the way I did at, at Imperial College. And, and part of it, it's London. Part of it, it's a close community geographically that we're, the buildings are even close. And so we could bump into each other a lot. Um, I think that's a special cultural impact. And can we institutionalize a sense of culture? I, I, think, it's an, I think it's important for deans to be thinking that way. And for college presidents to be thinking that way, very much so. But and 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 how do you connect? You know, you, you were mentioning about that that experience that you lived through as a student and the connectivity that you do. I know, you know, a little bit about Babson. I, I think that's also present. But is there a way that you would uh, also connect the culture at Babson with with your experience at uh, at Imperial in terms yeah, of the, the yeah, way? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. It's the intimate sociology of understanding. I don't know that I've ever used that sentence before in my life, but the intimate understanding uh, of the sociology says, what is the culture of opportunity recognition? At Imperial, the opportunity was a lot about the sciences. And I would go to a chemistry lab or a, a physics, and they would use words I didn't really understand, but they would talk about the impact and effect of that. And I saw inspired intellects engaging in opportunity recognition. And, and there was an aspiration for this understanding to improve society, almost, almost uh, uh, universally uh, at, at Imperial College, and maybe even more so than at Babson, but at Babson, the very same thing. Everyone talks about the nature of opportunity and, and what person is going to be uh, uh, uplifted by this, enhanced by this, educated, made better because of this. It is that intimate connection to the hard work I'm doing to the improvement of the human condition that was embedded in the sociology of both institutions. Thank you. And, and in fact, there was a comment uh, um, in, the, in the chat uh, or in the Q&A before about uh, exchanges between uh, uh, Imperial and, and BAPS. And we definitely, we, we too need to work, you know, get our teams to get to work on that because it's exactly as you were saying, I mean, there are so, so many proximities on the, on the, on the culture be, between the two institutions that that, that that seems to be something that we should definitely be, be, be on, the, on the works of, uh, of trying to get, uh, uh, to get done. Uh, uh, another question that has gotten a, a lot of support and it's, uh, and it's an interesting one is, you know, who have been your role models uh, as you progress in, in your, your career? I mean, who, I mean you, met, you already mentioned one very important one that, uh, that, you, that you spoke in such a wonderful uh, way, which was your, your mentor for your PhD, your, your, your advisor. Uh, but, but in general, you know, wh who do you see as, as role models that, you've been, uh, that, that, that has been influential in your life? 
Yeah, I think my family unit probably was a, a, a solid foundation. And, and uh, I, I lament that there's not more of that, that, that we're family units are deteriorating in a lot of societies. And, and I had a strong mother and father and, and tough brother and sisters and kept me in line. And it was a fa fabulous support system. That's a, a mentoring function and an underpinning of values, I think. My college football coach was actually became the founder of Jiffy Lube and brought us in. So we were co-founded Jiffy Lube with my college football coach, a guy named Jim Hyman, who was uh, one of, uh, I think, a not just a good entrepreneur, but a great entrepreneur. He's, he's started up in three different industries and brought them all to national or international scale. Uh, just a genius. He, he's an older retired uh, gentleman now, but I, I hold him in, in incredibly high esteem. And then um, there, the, the two professors at Babson College, who I had as professors and then as partners when I became a, uh, a professor here, Bill Bygrave and Jeff Timmons, really taught me that integration of the intellectual content. And, uh, and Bill Bygrave introduced me to Sue Burley and Imperial College. He said, uh, Bill Bygrave is a Brit. He's got his uh, uh, doctorate from, uh, from Oxford, uh, a school secondary to Imperial, but still a pretty good school. And um, he said, there's, there's this college in England. You ought to go and look at that. If you're thinking of a PhD, Bill said, you need to go to look at Imperial College. So uh, those are the people who are really the mentors in my life. Very good. Th thank you very much for 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 sharing for sharing that. Now we we have a a question more from a, a, an entrepreneurial uh, perspective, an, an entrepreneur that um, that's asking. You know, as you're going through your, um, you know, through your early stages of your of your um, uh, entrepreneurial firm, you know, how to think about venture capital and angel investors. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, the, the role that they can play developing your, your, your entrepreneurial project? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the reality is you're likely to need startup capital. I would ask you to be rigorous in your understanding of how you're going to apply that capital and what milestones you will achieve with that capital and begin a conversation with your investors um, that is intimate to them being co-creators of, of the vision. Um, you will sol it'll solve a lot of problems down the road. When, when visions part, so doesn't capital. And when capital splits, it splits a company rather uh, uh, harshly. So, um, so make sure that you're communicating about how you're going to use, what capital you need, what goals you will achieve, what results will impact, what next rounds you're going to have, and continue that, make that a dynamic part of the relationship. It isn't write me a check and I'll let you know quarterly. It is a really dynamic relationship. The second piece I would say is to think about smart money and to really look at people who can elevate your business model or your relationship in the industry. So people who have invested in retail or in fitness or in automotive or in technology and where they can get you to the next level. I'll tell you, you'll have easier conversations. You'll have more rational valuations. You'll have better access to capital. And you, in, in times of trouble, they'll connect you with an ecosystem that will help you survive better. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. You, you know, we also have a, a question here about, um, uh, about uh, you know, the examples coming out of Babson. You know, this is an, uh, you know, uh, Kirk, uh, 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 an alum from Imperial that uh, is uh, created a startup on, on health tech um, at the time. And he's wondering about, you know, what would be, you know, two or three, you know, interesting examples uh, from Babson that you could share with, with the community. Perhaps uh, some of our alumni are less, uh, less familiar with some of the, the, yeah. the, the companies that came out of Babson that you think represent well, kind of that media that you talked about that really starts at the, at, at the college and then, you know, induces that, uh, that action that then follows through. I'll, I'll give you two quick ones. Um, the first one you, you, I don't know if you know it or not. Uh, it's called Home Depot. Um, it's based in Atlanta in the United States, public company, uh, Arthur Blank, the Arthur M. Blank School for Entrepreneurial Leadership. Um, he, he generated uh, out of Babson. Uh, Babson alum, uh, the initial idea here, uh, built it over a long period of time, owns uh, several professional um, sports teams, the Atlanta Falcons, the Atlanta United Football Club, uh, he owns the golf stores. He owns a lot, uh, multi-billionaire. 
uh, and um, probably the most generous man, frankly, I've ever met, both in time and money. Uh, he is, he's got a wonderful spirit. Um, another one who's a more recent alum, it's a fun example for me, is a guy named Jamie Simonoff. And he, um, a, a fairly simple technology called ring.com, ring video doorbells. He was the first video doorbell company. He came to me after he graduated, a few years after he graduated, and he said uh, he thought that the, the home security industry was going to change rapidly and we needed to use technology, it's about 10 years ago, technology to uh, enhance security. He thought a doorbell was a good idea. I asked him a million questions, none of which he could answer very well. Um, I yelled at him and told him that he had to do more and better work. And he told me, um, he said, he said, Steve, I apologize. You think I'm coming for advice. I'm really coming for your money. Um, and he said, um, I want you to invest. And I, I, he's been a dear friend for a long time. So I said, I'm going to give you the money. Uh, but when you lose it, because this is a lousy idea, or at least it's not well, uh, you know, executed enough. Uh, when you lose it, I don't want that to affect our relationship. We're going to be friends forever. So then about six years after that, he called me and said he sold it to Amazon for $1.3 billion uh, and was going to send me a nice check. So um, the sort of uh, from ring video doorbell to, um, to, to Home Depot, we've had uh, lots of stuff uh, in between. About 10% of our population does a startup. About 40% uh, do finance, a lot of them in entrepreneurial finance, and the rest in a broad set of fields. Very good, and actually, that uh, in the US, as we start to draw close to our to to our hour, you know, uh, there's a, a question I was meaning to to ask you, and actually, it's uh, it showed up in the in the in the Q and A as well. So it's actually a very nice uh, segue because I was meaning to ask you the, the the same question, which is, you know, w w what's what's next for you? You know, you've had this uh, amazing career. You know, straddled entrepreneur, CEO, you know, uh, faculty member. Uh, student, of course, but then, um, you know, president of a university, you know, but, uh, you know, your limitless energy, your, your, your view of the world, always, you know, searching for those opportunities. And, and especially as you, as we hear you talk about the limitless opportunities you see in the world begs the question. And, and, and what's, what's next for, for Stephen uh, after, you know, after where you are at the moment? Well, I'll tell you what's very next for me is that I'm going to write a memo to an email to Francisco Veloso and say, we got to get together and do a deal. We've got to come together and figure out how we're going to change higher education. And in the larger picture, my mission at the end of life is, is uh, evolving higher education. I think the value of higher education, the value of learning is so enhanced that if colleges and universities don't evolve, we risk the fabric of society. And I mean it with, with all that seriousness that we must evolve as a business model. We have we're doing important work and it's gonna only get more important. And I would ask the Imperial College alums and the Babson College alums to support that effort in, in growing education across the globe. The other thing is I think Planet Fitness can democratize fitness and I think can make a, a more healthy world. And I wanna see a Planet Fitness in every country in the world. Those seem to be, you know, wonderful, um, wonderful drivers. And, and I, I very much, uh, you know, I think that the point that you made on, on education is something that, of course, given my role at, at, the, at Imperial, and in particular, how serious that Imperial would take the, also the innovation in education. And I mentioned that at the beginning of our, of, of our, of our event is really something that, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking because we, as you were mentioning, you know, we are in a different juncture, right? I mean, people now can access the basics of the knowledge, you know, through videos, you know, through a variety of mechanisms, even outside of the university. But I think that precisely because of our experience with entrepreneurship, we understand the power that the right convenient, you know, convening the right group of people with the right mentorship can have on preparing people to be successful in the future. And I, I think if we take that perspective and apply it to the broader education and we realize, yes, education is changing. Education is, is going in a different direction because you know, the access to information has changed dramatically given digitally. 
but not the need for for education but the need to rethink what that edu education is and to realize that what we've been doing on the on the entrepreneurship side which is creating this environment for people to get the knowledge but then connect the knowledge to experimentation to um uh, you know to a community and the power that 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 has had for us in the in in the entrepreneurship side is certainly something that i feel you know can have um you know a much broader remit when we think about the future of education the future of universities and in a way that i very much agree with you i mean i think that there is no other environment like a university for a young person to mature um, and to connect a set of knowledge in a very integral way with a community to be prepared to be successful in future life and, and that's certainly something that i see as a, as a major responsibility in, in my own role it's something that um, uh, i uh, you know i already knew we shared before even this uh, this hour with uh, with you but but certainly now after after this uh, this this very nice conversation i see how close we are in this in this perspective and and how much i will take up on your on your um, on your challenge for us to get together and to and to and to discuss you know what else we can um, we can do uh, on this uh, on this great opportunity but also very important um, uh, challenge and uh, i don't know if you, is anything else you want to uh, you know share with with our community before we draw it to a close you know, the, the, the final statement is just a very personal thank you to, to you, Francisco, uh, Dean Veloso, your, um, your warmth, your vision, your leadership at Imperial. Imperial is very important to me and has been important to our family. And thank you for your leadership. No, thank you very much for your support, for your engagement for tonight, uh, for sh you know sharing so openly and so, uh, and so candidly, you know, your, your views on, on, on the world. It's been wonderful to connect. Uh, we've promised ourselves that we would continue this conversation, and so we we, we will. And so I, uh, I I very much like to thank also all our community that was here uh, tonight. You know, thank also the alumni team for for organizing this um, uh, this event. And um, I look forward to the next opportunity uh, to connect uh, with our alums uh, either through you know a digital tool such as today or you know, in a physical sense as well, both are, are very welcome. It allows different things, but, uh, but, but it's both wonderful opportunities to always connect to our, uh, to our amazing community. So thank you everybody for, for joining tonight. Have the rest of, uh, of an evening and uh, I look forward to hear your next entrepreneurial success stories uh, when we connect. And thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Looking forward for the next opportunity to see you as well. Thank you.